we kind of predicted Rascal Jester to come out ahead in this series. Uh, we both predicted 3-1. If our predictions to hold true, they need to win three back to back to back. How would they do it if they were going to do it? What do you need to see in terms of changes in draft and play style to, to try and come back in this series? Skirmish as well as you did, not from 10,000 gold down. That's, that's the basis of it. Um, I mean, I, I, I think what that being on... What incredible analysis. Thank you. What Skirmish the... like you did, but just maybe don't go 10k down. Sam, that would be great. They had a five-man shockwave and Hecarim in the base. True. And win. Ah, um, the fact that you can find that at all is absurd. And yes, when you are that far ahead kind of end up walking into those things a bit more because you're just trying to finish the game and, and you know you're just being very confident and they had a right to be confident didn't lose anyone that's why right um mm. but there are a couple of fights where things got very close just from the you know the micro outplays that rascal jester were having we can see the potential of these team fighters uh, and these skirmishes amongst the, the rascal jester roster i think that in terms of draft first pick hecarim that's the right choice every time if hecarim is available you damn well take it just too strong a champion right now i think that um it's really difficult because I'm kind of sat there and like, oh man, you, maybe you want to go towards a more proactive support. But the Aphelios Tom Kench was fine in that lane. They did fine yeah. in CV2. They did all right. They were pushing in early. I think it's more about scouting out Mujin early and then mm -hmm. also not just. I, I think the main thing for me would be that top lane, right? Because you think you had that counter pick. It ended up being anything but that. Everything else I think was fine in terms of draft. I think it's more about that play style. You did get pushed around early. You managed to turn around. But, you know, if you're going to half -heart, half-heartedly fight around those second dragons and stuff like that, it is always going to be um, an awkward affair closing out that game because, you know, you're just like, oh, you know, we'll just coin flip the second dragon. If we get two early dragons, we're fine. Uh, it wasn't that. They lost the dragon. They lost kills. And then they really struggled to stabilize in that game. Yeah, I think we've also got to call out as well that, you know, if you're going to flick a Camille into an art and then a Tom Kent of Thelios, that indicates surely you want to play more around top side, right? Rather than around the bot lane where Hatchimecha seemed to spend most of his time, at least when he was looking for ganks. We didn't see any look up into the top lane at all, really, honestly, from, from the Hecarim. And Nocturne was certainly hanging around, at least in the lane, a couple times more. So, you know, you've got to make work, make your picks and your comp work a little bit better for you, you know? Playing mm. through a Felios Tom Kench doesn't sound quite as potent in some ways. No, it's not. It's not really the all-powerful two v two. I mean, we saw stuff like Varus Tom Kench back in season seven. That was a very different beast. Um, we saw what the fellows could do when they were bored enough space. It just never really got to that point. Now the question is, of course, well, V three have won on red side. They get a chance to go over towards blue side. I would mm -hmm. assume they're going to pick that up. Does that change their draft? Does that allow them to, um, you know, pivot around their draft? Uh, a, a little well it, are they going to lose out rather on that pivoting around in that draft and is that going to affect them against rascal jester who we know are a strong team second place in the regular season took a game off of dfm in the in that upper ma upper bracket match as well that juggernaut match mm -hmm. v3 cannot be complacent now they need to stick the landing as you we were saying one game's all well and good you have to last the whole last the whole best of five though well We'll have to see whether they can actually pull that off. Of course, they've got the rest of it to do it. There is the ability for both of these teams to adapt. The Jink certainly worked out at the bot side, but so importantly did Nocturne LeBlanc. And of course, the Cog Cog on the NAR is a bit of a spanner in the works, though ironically not into the team with the guy called Cog Cog, you know, spanner. <laughs> of course, okay. Moving on from that very poor pun. Uh, <laughs> uh, what kind not of... quite as poor as Rascal Jester were during that game, though. They they didn't exactly have much money in pocket. That is rude. Hey, hey I was talking is... about monetary <laughs> funds here. I'm okay, not talking fair, about okay. anything about gameplay. The game. Okay, that, actually... <laughs> that tells me how British I am when I go. That's poor. Is is an assumption of play rather than like uh, sort of net worth, Absolutely. such as it was as a League of Legends champion. Fiscally unresponsible were were the Rascal <laughs> Jester in that game. <laughs> well. uh... Don't want to go in debt to your opposing team, Den K. That's for sure. The Bank of Summoners Rift is a dangerous one. Boris certainly comes back to pay you back. You do not want to be in debt to that particular amount. Future market aside, I suppose as well, we've got to sort of think a little bit more around um, potentially how Rascal Jesters, if they were going to draft like that, either, I think in my mind, they want to prioritize playing around or through that top side or switch the roles around. Get yourself a little bit more of a a playmaking option for the bot lane where you have got these options and if you want to play through bot lane then maybe tom kent isn't the pick for secret 
I agree with that. Um, because I mean, this draft should have been one where your Camille just passively wins out about against the Nar. Uh, that didn't happen. And I think one of the problems is that well, maybe maybe this is a problem. With the first pick Hecarim. If you're looking mm -hmm. at the first pick Hecarim, it's not really a champion that twins up well um, into ganking top lane uh, very early on. Maybe that's something which doesn't stabilize the map easy enough for uh, Rascal Jess to play around that lane. If this is just going to be Kogog turning up and Kinatu not. Maybe that is something that uh, then Rascal Jester have to just take away during the breaks and just say, all right, okay, how do we reevaluate? How do we get into this and draft around a lane, which actually can give us pressure on top lane? Because they were getting pushed in all three lanes for a good mm. amount of time in that game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, mean, I suppose the other thing we've got to call out is like, it was pretty even for large push until that Herald engage. Jester's take that Herald, the second Herald this is, of course. Um, Steam to get out. Hachimecha sort of starts steaming away despite getting having a chain on him. And then... Kinatu hops over the wall, think he's onto Hollow, and gets exhausted and nope. <laughs> plays out from there, and it's a complete disaster. Well, it was it also, is. I mean, the, 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 the Flame Trump was down in the choke point in the River 2, and that caught um, Recap, because trying to walk mm. towards the Orianna. So that means that the Shockwave pinged. I, I'm actually not sure if the shield was on Kinatu at that point, either way. Uh, sorry, the shield, rather, from, from the Orianna. Yeah. Anyway, the Shockwave does not land onto the Jinx. They couldn't have exhausted both, and there's a chance that the Jinx goes down at that point. And then you're playing with 180 carry to none. Maybe you don't have to run backwards and kite back. So you can rather uh, start playing um, again with what your team wants to be doing with long, long range, fast paced follow up and start running down that fight because the initial combo doesn't land. Well, they don't win the fight. And this is also just a little bit of rookies on stage here, like Kinatu going in a little bit while the rest of his team was not interested. Is that just a little bit of uh, not lack interested of communication, in tunnel, tunnel vision from, from Kinatu at that point? Sorry, cool, you the mid worst time. Bad time. Worst I know. time to go take a drink break there. Um, I suppose now, I mean, um, looking through to this, I mean, I, I assume I mean, we'll have to see which again side choice coming through. Sure. If V3 have found a way to win on red side, uh, does that mean that again, one thing that we saw that V3 um, had in their first round match versus the, versus the Fukuoka Soft Bank Hawks was they prepared a load of null counters and none of them worked out. Like they had Urgot, they had a couple of other things going up towards that uh, top lane too. They tried Tristana top, just didn't work. Sometimes you have to just sit back and go, okay, our prep didn't work. we got to go back to something a little more basic. Go to work mm. back to something which had been working in the regular split. Because this is really not playing to our strengths right now. Of course, there's still a lot of series left to play. And speaking of series left to play, we're in to picks and bands. Rascal Jester's back on blue sides interesting whereas v3 esports over of course on the red side still they have got the series lead and the bands thus far exactly the same galio and rel and we'll see whether that final band sticks true for the jesters as well or whether they'll change up towards something like the nar but nope tristana is still off the table and v3 have one final band to work with that they do so the question is so it is going to be the idea v3 are looking this thing okay Pick yourself the heck room. It's there. Take it. You did it last time. What are you going to go towards? Are they going to go towards something like the Nar themselves? No. They're running it back, saying that heck room was not the problem. It means that Kogog gets I, their hands on the Nar again. Salt? There's just a lot of salt. <laughs> and I feel the need to sort of start moonwalking. Like, one might say running backwards. So uh... welcome to a game one of the day between <laughs> Rascal Jester and V3, where no <laughs> game has happened before, and this draft has <laughs> not played out again. <laughs> And there is the glitch in the Matrix. Renekton switches the bands up. It's not going to be quite the same anymore. No Tom Kench third. Instead, Rascal Jesters decide, you know what? Screw this. Never mind the Camille. Never mind the Tom Kench. We're just going to pick this option for Kinati. You can play weak side with it. It'll be a bulky front line. It's pick. It's uh, angry crocodile, which is always an interesting option <laughs> to deal with jinxes. And instead, V3 say, never mind, pick it with Tom Kench ourselves. We'll just lock in the Brawl now before you can ban it away. So now you see the Nar, you see the Brawl. Uh, you know you're dealing with a whole lot of tanky. I actually wonder at this point whether you want to pick something like Vayne. I actually think Vayne could be a really fun pick here. But um, you've already locked in quite that Renekton. It is quite short range. That is always going to be the problem. Uh, and one of the problems about Brawl is that you can always, you know, flash forward for that Q if you're losing priority in that lane. V3, banning away the Ezreal again. I think that's important. That is one of those picks which can build... Um, heck, you can even build towards Kraken Slayer nowadays. It's like you're, you're, you go towards your two non-mythic items first and you go for like Kraken Slayer into third or whatever. You still have the DPS to take down your beefier members, your HP stackers. And um, with, the, with that Ezreal gone, we saw how important it was between DFM and Rascal Jester. 
does Sol have anything that can actually carry um, as the focal point of their team? Because the Ophelos didn't really work out last time. Didn't really work out. I also say he wasn't necessarily the easiest position to work out with the way the team comp was working. Uh, that's a lot of people coming for your face at that point as the mask as an Ophelios. Last ban, though, will be the Twisted Fate away from Ace, which I think makes some sense. He's certainly shown a propensity towards those global champions. So oh, yeah, this champion which V3 for... doesn't care about. Yeah, <laughs> this is not Seraphia. picked a ban in the first round of any of their games against Sengoku. So all five games, Seraphine was just mainly either taken away by V3 when they were on blue side or left through to this fourth pick. They don't get to flex it between support and mid lane. They do have now the, the ability to scale up into those team fights so very well. Rascal Jester, they know this. Are they going to index towards that team fighting even further? Have themselves a better team a, a lane matchup? Well, on the bot side, they certainly have something to play around now. And they've got the poise to pick up the Callista, the Marshal poise indeed, and they've got to pick up a support to go with it. So like the Alistair, I think, would make a lot of sense here. Always been a great combo with Callista. Nautilus as well. Nautilus, yeah, also a great option. Let's see what they want to go. They've left support till last pick, unless there's some real shenanigans going on in draft. I don't think support Oriana would be a great call right now, though I could see some hilarity in terms of support. Okay. Crocodiles instead it'll be set, which is another great combo with Callista. Throw set in, he gets to face break and pull people straight back out. That sounds like a good option. Final pick for the jungle for Mujin is the Olaf. Works very well with the Seraphine. Let's see, of course, how it all works out in game. Of course, it's all well and good. Uh, theorizing play on the rift is what matters in the end. And honestly, the last time I saw Ace on Seraphine, can't say I was that impressed. No, and it's also not the kind of pick where you have that, you know, the, the more constant presence of something like LeBlanc in terms of their skirmishing potential. Mm. Seraphine is much more about meeting up and linking up with their teammates and then going to do something rather than making plays on their own. The set as the support, I think it's really important into the Nar. I think that set is really good against the Mega Nar. He does, you know, the Captain Crunch uh, serial remix <laughs> with the Hop Crunch Wallop Nar and all that other stuff. He gets punted out by the set ult before he even really yeah. gets to land that combo. That's really important to track now in this game. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this is actually a Rhino special. I think Rhino's set was probably the best support set in the league outside of by maybe far. Proud on the side of uh, Burning Core. Um, and so what that means is that you can just dunk the Nar back into your Jinx, back into the Seraphine. But the Seraphine is that all important team fighting pick. You need to get ahead with this composition for Rascal Jester. And that early game last time was not enough to really do the same for that first game. Yes, but this time you can leave the Renekton weak side and just say we are diving bot. Bring in Orianna, bring in the <laughs> set with the shock with the shockwave as well, and you try and take out the jinx. Of course, you're doing it into a brawn, which is always a little bit more tricky. And if Seraphine turns up, an encore under turret tends to yeah. suck. You know, just so, as a head by the by. Yeah, but if I could have a favor out. from our producer, is there any way we can open up the channel point casino and maybe get ourselves some predictions for the second game? No worries if not, but uh, it would be fun to really put the uh, put your points where your mouths are. I personally think this goes a long way into um, Rascal Jester's uh, kind of comfort of playing around their bot side, having that power to v2. Question is for me, the, is it going to be Cockog just staying so strong in that top side again? Well, to find out whether it'll be a blackjack or a bust, we'll have to, of course... Wait and see how it plays out on the Rift. I've said it before. I'll say it probably a few more times yet. Because it, well, it holds true, honestly, ladies and gents. And uh, got ourselves a pretty standard start. Though Kinatu and Hachimecha are debating <clears throat> looking to put down an early ward. But Cog, Cog and Mujin... Oh, it's hanging around. I, I love well. these level one plays because okay, it looks like nothing is happening. But um, the fact that these teams have tried so hard to catch people out at level one side brushes in the middle of bot or top lane. The fact that these level one, you, you see like not the five man fan, you see like random two man stacks in places. It's really interesting to see what these teams have talked about during the break. It's like, oh, maybe maybe if they go to ward here, we can maybe catch them out here. Nothing comes of it at this point. Mujin and Kogkogo have themselves an early invade. Hatchmatch is starting on wolves, so will get himself at least one camp on the vertical jungling side of the map if it does tend uh, do does it finish off being like that. Mujin, though, going to finish off that blue buff and still be in the advantage in terms of buffs. Indeed, early level one face breaker down bot as well, and uh, Mujin looking to see whether he can make the most out of those buffs, and yet, that's Hachimesh just forced away, can't do what he wants to on that one. It's a bit unfortunate, but he's going to heal a little bit off the uh, Raptors as he goes past, and instead look to get across to that opposing blue buff. Hey, Russell, honestly, Jester, I heard uh, you like to go fast, have a phase rush. 
Indeed. Uh, yes, that is a lot of face rushes. You're <laughs> absolutely right. Face rush, set, face rush, Ariana, face rush, Hecarim. <clears throat> None of those are surprises, of course, but it's always relatively entertaining. It's a very strong rune of the men. It's very strong on those champions. Uh, match made in heaven, or at least Summoner's Rift. AI bot giving a slight edge over to V3. Hatchamecha half wondering about sticking around for the Goblin Sands. It's not safe, thing. safe too. And that's the difference, right? It'll be a two camp lead for Mujin purely because he gets to clear out the Gromp and the Wolves as well. Gosh, when you have a Seraphine losing in the late game like that, that that's when you know the draft is a little bit awkward. Can't to get the Empower Q, but he's getting absolutely done some by Cog Cog. Cog Cog again just hits everything, just needs the final boulder toss, goes wide on it, misses the, uh, the crunch as well. And uh, sorry, it's a wallop actually is that ability. Um, and we'll I'm telling you, it's, 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 too, it's too much Captain Crunch. Um. <laughs> There you go. Sol is up in the river because, of course, he has got a big shove in that bot side. But uh, Hatchimetra still needs to finish up his red buff and get to a point where he can really contest for that scuttle crab. But Olaf will wander down. Oriana's under tower. And that agency and priority in mid lane will mean that the Olaf gets to start up the scuttle crab in bot side river. Good stuff from Mujin in this early game. It is, uh, and he's going to have himself his full top side to go towards if he wants, and he'll probably beat Hecarim towards this top scuttle too. Given that Nara is winning out, it's double scuttle looking likely the side of V3. So yes, a slight early lead for Mujin. Worked out very well for V3 versus Sengoku in their lower bracket um, match versus uh, Sengoku, of course, uh, which they won 3-2. And now he gets himself that double scuttle, playing around a winning top side again. Rascal Jester, what is going to change this game? You do have that bot lane with early priority. Can you use that as a leverage point in this game? Another problem is there's still a whole red side quadrant for Mugen to pick up. This Olaf is going to be in mm -hmm. a good 12 CS ahead of this Hecarim. He'll have a red buff in hand again to try and force around the map best he can. But in the bot side, the spears are raining. Ryan has taken Ow. very low. The true damage comes out. And that is just a filthy amount of damage from the Rascal Jester's bot lane, who have had enough of these even and slightly losing lanes. They've gone full lane prior. <laughs> they have, and this is a healless laning phase from both TV2s as we can see miss a cannon. Shame on you, Renekton. Shoved under tower and uh, feeling the brunt of that. But yeah, the TV2, no heals. The extra damage coming through, much harder to um, really disengage at that point. So you can understand why the resets were coming in at that point from uh, v3 actually it's slow pushing looks like that bot lane towards rascal jester just looking at those minions on the minimap not quite sure about that one so early lane looks priority like, yeah. vamp scepter picked up by soul already v rascal jesters do you have something to play around in the tv2 hatchimetra on vision here of course because cog cog pushed in and got its b ward and that jungle CS has been great for Mujin, don't get me wrong, it's got him to an early advantage, but he'll need to make something happen with it, because if lanes keep playing out like this, it could get a bit scary, particularly, say, towards the bot lane. Does have some options, say, around the top, where Cog Cog is, again, flexing his laning prowess, but not the early explosive lead that happened for V3 last mm. game. No, not quite. So, now the question is, where are these leads going to lead to are they going to flourish into something even larger or are they just you know, going to naturally swing back towards the middle of the pendulum cog cog four to five cs lead yes match to force canato under turret lose him as a uh, cannon and stuff like that but it's not really the same as what happens to that camille and the renekton is going to spike much earlier into the game has the level six already probably going towards you know their own stride breaker or their gore drinker have a bit more survivability than the camille at the expense of not having the upper end of the team fight and 1v1 damage. And on the bottom side, you are going to again spike earlier with the Callisto compared to the Fellows. Rascal Jester, you want to fight around a second dragon this game, you're probably in a much better position to. Gold dead even right now. No dragons taken yet, but of course, Mujin at level 5. Olaf with Hachimetra going towards the top side, as spotted out by the invade over towards the Raptors. Gives this Olaf free reign to start up that early dragon. Hachimetra, though. Looking like he might either trade for this Scuttle Crab and maybe get onto the Raptors as well, uh, which might catch him up a little bit in CS, which of course would be very grateful for. Um, but that, that'll have to be probably the trade in priority. Mujin gets level 6 off that Drake as well. Instead, how do you think about coming in the top side? Cog Cog never nearly at Nar. Gonna oh, Ghost Pops. Gets the level 6, does get the Nar back, doesn't get as much down as he would like. Gonna try and get the shove back, but it's just not enough. Ghost Pops doesn't really get what he wanted there. Does Dominus Pops. Yeah. 
So he tries Ooh, to. Oh, now he has no rough. ghost. Level six on the RLF. Goodbye, Hatcher. Uh, he does have, of course, a devastating charge. Quite difficult to keep up with him. There's the Ragnarok. Does land that undertow, trying to get the last axe and hits it. I thought that I missed actually, but the great stuff from Mujin. Uh, nearly had the fancy feet to hatch a matcha, but not quite enough. Colonel, I'm trying to slide past the undertow, but I'm too dummy thick and the axes keep taxing me. Hatch a matcha's model size just, just pixels too large. And Mujin picks up the first blood, had himself the level advantage, had himself a flash, and of course the ultimate too. Hatch a matcha goes down, and that was a very opportunistic top lane play. Uh, he tries to time out the stun and the, and the slow that comes after the Nar ult, which came through. Just didn't last long enough. Devastating Charge runs out. We'll see that again on this replay. What happens? Kanati has a wave to slice and uh, dice through, but he doesn't get the point and click slow very early. Kogog is up into his mega. It's not like you have the ult to close the distance and get behind the enemy champion at this point. Walks back over Vision, and then he kind of knows at this point, ah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty boned. Um... And yes, you get the phase rush active, but Mujin just has so much extra move speed. Guess your extra move speed from Ragnarok too. And finish them off, and there you go. Just uh, just too, too dummy thick is the heck room. Was that the undertow hitting, or was that just a last auto in range? I'm not it was enough sure. H it was it was too much HP for it to be a last auto, I'm pretty sure. Well, you know what? Either way, uh the line was funny. I'm sticking by it. <laughs> there we go. I think that's fair. Uh somewhere out there, Solid Snake is turning in his grave and wondering why he's turned into a horse. But uh, either way. Good first blood for Mujin. Hachimecha now does at least have level 6, so it is a little bit more safe in trying to play around. But Mujin takes the early lead and then extends it further with a great first blood play there. That said, bot lane looking a little rough for this Jinx and Braum. Mm. Um, of course, not falling miles and miles and miles behind. Haven't lost any plates yet, but could still get pretty scary. Hachimecha still on this Herald. Mujin is around, though. But here comes Set, and that makes things a little bit trickier for Mujin to be mm. playing around. So, Kanati is hanging out over the wall. Ragnarok was available, so no real threat from the um, the stun coming in. The was it, It's not the Brutal Strikes. That's I think that's that's actually Malphite. I, I, see, I can remember the Slice and Dice and the uh, the Cull the Meek, but the, the W is the one which uh, Ruthless occasionally... Ruthless Predator. Ruthless Predator, that's the one. Ah, man. That's, uh, that's actually a pretty good ability name. I should remember that one a little bit more. But, that's um, a great one. It, it, this has got great <laughs> ability names. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 sure. Cull the Meek, Ruthless Predator, Slice and Dice, Dominus. Ah, oh, love them. They're, they're all pretty okay by my eyes. Um, <laughs> just going to touch in on, on, on Hollow and this Jinx, because when we have a Jinx in the game, it so often becomes, okay, what's your backline access? How do you get on top of it? We saw Rel be a good answer to the Jinx in, again, the previous series, V3 versus Sengoku, which V3 uh, used that Rel to great effect to shut down Gango, a really good AD carry in this split, at least. He's been one of our better performers uh, by using that Rel. Um, but in this game, you have to have a really big performance from both Sol and Secret to follow up on what Hecarim's doing. Yes, the Hecarim can get towards the Jinx, but if they have that cleanse to get away from the fear, they have the Braum then turning around. That's probably not enough on its own. You need to have a good showstopper. You need to have a good Fates call to really just make sure that the extra defensive tools from Jinx are not enough to get them safely out of the team fight. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it, isn't it? You can't cleanse a knockup, is also worth pointing out. So that Fates call does rise. QSS Flash also up. removed this season. You cannot get out of knockups by any means possible. Um, well, I mean, unless you have yourself something like a cholesterol. Funny how that works. <laughs> <laughs> So Secret definitely going to be wanting to play as aggressively as possible on this set. Ace and Mujin around this bot lane as well. But so is Hatcher Metra. Could end up with a bit of a party down here. And surprisingly, it's in bot lane, but doesn't amount to all that much. In party recap. down under. We'll get the wave shoved in mid, which will be a bit of a trade. Oh. Kinatu knocked into the wall, <laughs> looking for that final ball of toss, but can't find it. Cog Cog not feeling quite capable enough of getting that solo kill. I think he possibly had the option there. Yeah, I, I was uh, I was wondering whether we'd see the skill check from Cogcog where he'd do something like a, a wallop flash, just sees if uh, the fingers are quick enough on the R key. Kanatu, not going to die at this time, is getting bullied around, is going to lose a wave to tower. I think that's probably going to be another plate going down too. Ace needs to be worried now, though. The vision so line has not spotted Rascal Jester nah, adding in. Smart. The under two, the under toe does, though. Drags that play under, which feels very apropos. But now, of course, the shove in mid will still continue. And don't think there's going to be enough here to stop this Herald charge. So that'll be the Herald uses a counterweight in mid. It's going to try and get the charge off. Doesn't no. quite manage it. No, it, it does not. Smite coming through from Mujin. It is going to be bot lane priority for the side of Rascal Jesters. 
but losing out on that gold is is really nasty for the side of Rascal Jester. They are behind 1,000 gold already. They have the early game scaling comp. They're against the Seraphim. We know what happens if you try and 5v5 against that mid laner. Uh, so Rascal Jester not getting that extra gold, not able to get themselves their points of power quickly, uh, well, quicker into this game, is something they're now worried about. It's the second time a Herald from the Jesters hasn't amounted to all that much. Yes, it'll get them a Dragon, but they didn't get the early Drake either. So it's not like there are the two Drake stacks. So yes, the Herald still buys some space around the Dragon. Yes, it bought them priority, but it's a question about whether it's enough. Mm. And of course, with Sol having roamed around a little bit for all that, he's lost a lot of his CS advantage there as well. They have, uh, because that was, you know, edging towards 15, 20 CS. Not the case now. I guess, luckily, Kanatsu at a better point of power than he was in the last game. Remember, it was level 13 to 11 come the mid game because of V3 taking so many good fights and Kanatsu dying on the front end of them so much, uh, besides just getting bullied around in laning phase. Sol, still going to be strong, though. Once he gets up towards two items and he has the meal for shield bow, has himself a rune on hurricane. If he can dance around the Olaf, not get hit by the Undertow, that's very important why he has the cleanse too. Remember, slows mm -hmm. onto Callista actually drop her attack speed too. Getting hit by a stray uh, Seraphine E, a Undertow, a Boulder Toss, a W can make things very difficult for Sol. In the 2v2, he's fine. Just watch out for those slows. That's why the cleanse is important on this AD carry. Mujin running down bot. He's been tracking a lot of the Rascal Jester's plays pretty damn well. That sweeper's not going to spot out the ward, which is pretty important. But of course, with the wave shoving in, as long as he's not spotted in that bush, he might still get the option. He's going to step forward anyway. But there Oof. is the... Uh, that's unfortunate. All right, well, they're still going to try and keep going forward. Reiner is going to get pulled back. Getting shot back as well by the showstopper. The true damage is there, and Sol gets the kill. Teleport coming in behind to prevent too much of a follow-up. But it's going to be cancelled by, I believe... That would have been Ace who cancelled that one out. With beat drop lands. Uh, so it was the beat drop landing, gets the root. It was recapped, cancelled by Ace. I think that's better for Rascal Jester, though, because V3 mm -hmm. call off the play themselves. They weren't teleporting in with their own uh, mid laner, and that means that the mid laner of Rascal Jester and recap gets to stick around in mid, gets themselves an extra wave, doesn't miss that by going bot side. Rascal Jester, bit awkward on the engage, but do walk away with a kill. They do. It's still forced a lot of summoners out from V3 as well, which is great news. Hollow down the flash makes him all oh so much more vulnerable. Not a lot of plates gone this game, though, which is not necessarily what you want to see if you are running something like the Callista, especially if you got the Herald first as well. Uh, but all the same, they're going to feel relatively okay with how this has gone in the bot side. They get a kill onto the Callista. That's good news for Jesters, even if they are still down about a thousand gold. V3 not feeling too unhappy about how this early game has gone as well. No, because Kokog is still winning out on top side. Um, we could see there that Kanati was kind of holding the rage bar there, just threatening yeah, the uh, the flash ruthless predator. Loads of damage coming out from that triple auto attack, of course, and then the extended stun duration. Even though he was low HP, and you can see that Kokog was maybe looking for something under tower yet again. The HP given from the Dominus just allowing him to keep well uh, uh, the potential HP coming through, just holding that in the back pocket. Dominus coming through allows Kanati to. At least hold some threat over that lane for a little while and keep himself uh, in lane for an extra wave and not lose that to tower. And there's Mujin's jungle proximity. Just got a little bit more of it this game in general, of course. Hatch and Betch, uh, kind of stunted a little bit by the way the early game went and the way the early priorities went. Then he was kind of forced to uh, triage in his own jungle, I think is the way. Okay, I've got to try and mm. run and steal this blue buff. Okay, I've got to try and take these traps before Mujin comes in. And you can see the indecision, here. right? You, you, mm. He was back, running back and forth in that bot river going, oh, can I steal an extra camp? And actually, no, he couldn't. Then he died in that top side, two levels behind now. Hatcha Metcha, we talk about uh, his consistency winning out, being king for so long in this spring split. Just hasn't been the case in this series so far. Mujin's definitely had the backup to make his plays in the jungle count, and it's been a bit of a frustration. That's the thing with Hecarim. He's fine once he gets to level 6, but before that, he's definitely bullyable, especially if Devastating Charge is down. There is no flash. Oh, that's insult to injury. The You're trying to get your XP back, trying to catch up somehow, and one of the big camps gets taken away from you while you're losing on the top side of the map. Rascal Chess, they try and get something for Hatchmatcher. It just does not come easily. Yeah, the Herald got summoned there. It didn't necessarily get all that much. My screen has frozen briefly, which does make things a little <laughs> difficult. So I've no idea what's going on right now, but I've got a great freeze frame of mid lane. Hatcher Match is getting a jungle camp. It, the oh, glory beautiful. be to the jungler of Rascal Jester. XP are his gains. Uh, not enough to get him even in level with Mujin. Only just the one level down on the scorecards right now. But without any extra camps to take as of the moment, 
think V3, they're just really happy with the pace of this game. They have themselves stride breaker on the roll up. Very high damage, able to shut down the likes of that Callista. Now it's not just the undertow. You've got stride breakers to worry about. Mm. Callista is, has a lot of different checks and answers to them. Coming into this third dragon, Rathal Yester, I don't think they're far enough ahead to get themselves the advantages they really want. But if they, this, could this be is it. now, this could be their last point of power. This team fight is critical to the state of this game. And that's a level 12 Seraphine. Cog Cog not at Meganar yet. Still got a ways to go on that Rage Bar, so could definitely get chunked out before this all starts. And Salt certainly feeling the opportunity to step forward and get some damage down, but there's still a fair amount of zone control. You've got to be so afraid of the Encore, the Flame Chompers. Kanatu, though, is going to try and come round for a flank. He's going to come round the back. He's off vision, more huge. importantly. Hollow's in so much danger. The Onslaught of Shadow is there. Hollow being forced back. The dragon still goes down towards the Olaf. But Hollow's it's got no way out. The Encore is there. Still not enough. He's done. Kanatu gets another. And the team fight win is absolutely Rascal Jesters. Konko's going to try and get something, but he gets shoved back by the devastating charge. Crunches his way over a wall. But Mujin and Kokok are the only two remaining. There is no Baron to take, of course, this early on in the game. But it's a big team fight win, at least. And Nat's going to be secret shoved at the wall. But he's got a shield. Mujin in trouble. Getting shoved back, but does survive. Tower <gasps> shot's not <The> enough. <laughs> a little close, was... but still gets out just <laughs> fine. That's where you start just clenching a little for the life of Hatchimetcha. Once again, Whoa. oh my gosh, no way. <laughs> okay, That's not to be, call, not not to be caught out due to the, uh, the stature of his behind this time. Rascal Jester, their last point of power in this game. The very last time you really think, okay, they can contend with this. They find themselves Beautiful. a team fight win. What happens? Huge engaged by Hatchimetcha. Does get in there. The shockwave's not been pulled yet. But the team fight is so split. I don't think Recap particularly cares. He does die in this fight. Sadly for the side of Rascal Jester, though, they lose the dragon. And that means that they don't get themselves towards an earlier soul point. It's an infernal rift. That could have been a point of power for them. They do have that Kalissa. The extra objective secure in the rend is important in these games. They're still behind in gold. They do at least pick up some extra funds for their AD carry, though. Maybe Sol and this Callista can live to fight a little longer into this game. Of course, you got to ask where those extra funds are, because actually this Oriana and this Callista are quite fed. On the other side, where the, a lot of the lead is for V3 is around the Nar, which had a good long laning phase, and of course, Mujin on this Olaf, which aren't necessarily the hardest carries in the game. You'd rather see those advantages on your Jinx, probably, who is <laughs> <You'd> struggling <like> <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> You'd like that, particularly because if you get the first kill, Jinx just runs over the rest of the team fight. You now have a Putrefire coming out of Ace's Seraphine. So that, you know, that, that shield boat, you know, that W healing from, from, uh, the, Rene from the, um, from the Hecarim, you know, that mm. Conqueror and everything else coming in from, from the Renekton. It's just that less, uh, that, that less effective. 60% less if he does get hit by the first attack by one of those shield or shielded targets. And that can really be, again, one of these tipping points and the points of power that Rascal Jester needs to be playing so finely around because they didn't get that early advantage they were really looking for. And even if they won the team fight, they didn't get the dragon. And that is a big deal. It stops They're just lizard conservationists. They, they know that dragons are endangered species. K kudos to them. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's exactly it. And yes, they have a slight gold lead, but you can see the AI bot with this, you know, fairly hefty advantage over the V3, 68% chance of them winning is pretty notable, honestly. And mm. I, again, you can't necessarily disagree because the later this game goes, the more potent the Seraphine becomes keeping the Jinx alive. Of course, if you can murder the Jinx, you've got enough damage to probably win out the rest of the fight unless Mujin gets to murder absolutely mm. everybody. But there's only so many people that an Olaf can hit, I say, uh, possibly <laughs> jinxing myself or the whole of Rascal Jesters, but... Eyes away, the point stands. Very relevant on that one. Um, I mean, this is what I mean. Yes, you're absolutely right. It's, it's simple. You kill the Jinx, right? I mean, maybe Heath Ledger was onto something with that one, with that kind of terminology. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's it's hard to have the consistent backline access. Kinatsu, well, going to get the Impact W. Cockcock's in pretty danger. That's an unfortunate Meganar, but uses the full range of his dashes there. The the crunch, the strike break up, the flash to get himself out of danger. But that's a lot of playmaking tools down now. But Cog Cog, you can't just jetpack away from all your problems, but he had a stride breaker, so he could. Gets out of that play, <laughs> uses the flash, uses the, the Captain Hop this time, not the Captain Crunch, does get out of that, still at the cost of uh, a number of summoners. It allows Kanatu to get some bot lane priority. It maybe allows Rascal Jester to, again, you see that ward they just put on on, on that blue buff there, uh, it allows him to get a little bit more vision. That's kind of what they gain from that play. They do lose the Dominus, though. Hopefully, it'll be back up in time for the Dragon, though. Indeed, and of course, the important thing, though, is the 
flash beam down on your major front line and engage. Could definitely be a little bit harder for Cog Cog to find his way into place. Loses a little bit of side lane pressure. And the gold lead is, as we said, slightly in the Jester's favor. But that doesn't necessarily mean that much at this point in the game. Doesn't necessarily mean that much with how well V3s go. With what other advantages they have in terms of the Drake stacking. In terms of team comps as the game gets later. It's not like Jesters are out of it though. It's not like they don't have options. They've certainly got a very scary right. Callista here at two items. But this is, this is again... Pretty much the last chance they have to fight from a point of power. If they win this, get a dragon, maybe they can start heading towards the Baron. This could turn the game for Rascal Jesters. They have to stick the landing. Need that five point landing. Need to get the judges here on the, well, it's not a gymnastics Olympics final, but the point still stands. You need to be looking clean here. No messing up. No messing up that final tumble. It's got to land perfectly make it like Simone Biles and make it look stylish as well if you can they're forced out of the pit though which is not a good start secret goes forward Face and breaker. gets onto Cog Cog he's gonna get taken pretty down low but the fates call gets him space and time he goes in for the big knock up but he'll probably go down for his trade showstopper counts out because he's dead on sort of shadows going through but Reiner now taken low but it's a double for Jinx already the excitement is there it'll be another on top as well with the red buff soul running away v3 win the fight and that was not sticking the landing, Jesters. Looking at our checklist for this fight, was the Jinx murderized? Nope. Well, that's kind of unfortunate. Did he blow the any summoners? <laughs> they get, you didn't blow their summoners. I think a lot of it is just that secret did not get the play that they wanted to. Sol has flash, oh, but boy. needs to get the hell out of dodge. Does need forced Ace to stopwatch, of course, which is no bad thing. But uh, yeah, you learned quite lost quite a lot there. I understand. It's a desperation play. It's trying to find something when it's all gone wrong. It probably stops the Baron from being started straight away until Mujin uh, takes an errant, an errant hit there. That, I think, might have been it. That might be the turning point. We'll see the replay here, and it just doesn't come together yeah. for the, the Jesters. This play was always going to be more difficult uh, than the last fight. They don't quite get the knock if they want to. Hollow escapes the, the Callista ult. Doesn't get knocked up. Yes, cleanse doesn't cleanse uh, through knockups, but just look at this kiting from Hollow. The spacing is sublime. Ignores everything that he needs to. Gets excited. Gets out with a team fight win, and now V3 have themselves a scaling advantage with an Infernal Soul point. They don't have to fight for the next dragon. They don't have to fight for anything for a little mm. while. They can wait. They can sit on this lead. And honestly, this should be a slide into a victory for them at this point. It's on Rascal Jesters to make game-winning plays. Game-saving plays, rather. Nothing touched the Jinx. Not the Shockwave, not the Onslaught of Shadows, and certainly not the Fate's Call. That not is not Shockwave, what we yeah. need to see. <laughs> Shockwave only hit Rhino with an Unbreakable up. Like, that's... Not the best call, really, in terms of what's going on. It was close to hitting a few members, but the radius just not quite there. The synergy not quite there. And if Rascal Jesters can't land the Wombo combo, they run out of options in the team fight real quick. But they do. So they didn't have themselves a flank option that time. When you're playing against a Braum, a Seraphine, Jinx likes it too. Playing singular directional team fights are really good for you because you only have to watch the one doorway. You only have to watch the one angle and aim all of your disengage uh, abilities that direction. Wasn't the case, uh, well, that was the case rather in that last dragon fight. Rascal Justin, the one before that, did manage to get the, the, the Renekton into the back line because of some crafty flanking. Rascal Jesters effectively have one last thing in the playbook now, which is Baron Bates. You can use that Hurricane on the Callista to get some priority. Use those minions to kind of taxi down the lane and start trying to threaten all ins. You need to now be very careful from Rascal Jesters about how far you're going in, though, because if you flub that engage, Jinx has two items, has the extra quick cloak too. V3 can absolutely turn these plays around very quickly. Are they absolutely damn well can they've got the options they've got the items jester's a little bit shy on them but they've still got a fed callista they've still got yeah, a, an oriana a couple <laughs> items maybe if they can land the perfect combo jinx will still die let's be real if they can hit everything if they hit the shockwave on the onslaught of shadows maybe get a rend in there as well then things might be a little better for them but that's a fairly hefty call there's a lot of front line to get through and even if they get the jinx Cog, Cog, and Mujin are strong enough to maybe still threaten some low health bar members as well. Actually, I think I take that maybe out. I had to definitely threaten those low health bar members. And they're going to start up the Baron, but they haven't completed the sweeping. The vision is still on, on vision. there. You're right. So they're approaching it. Blue Trinket used. Cog, Cog has flashed. They see his Meganar now. This is the gauntlet thrown by V3. 
Down to about half HP. The onslaught of shadows is big. That's a big showstopper in the back line as well. Ace now in trouble. The encore's not bad. Concord gets a decent Meganar, but it's not enough. One for one right oh, now. Kinatu? Kinatu gets a fair amount of healing. That's a big shooting from the Steer Sterex as well. And a one for one isn't bad from the position you're in. So a secret doesn't quite get that uh, face with the Haymaker, rather, to get the shield. Does end up buying enough space in that back line. This is what happens when enough things just about land. Rascal Jesse would have much rather this happened at that last dragon, though. They do manage to save off that Baron attempt. Gonna go back into the replay. Of course, you see what happens with Cogcock here on the side. He's just sat there, just threatening. He doesn't hit the stride break. He doesn't hit the, uh, the, the extra slow. And that means that... Oh, no, the shockwave miss. The shockwave... With Rascal Jester, I was like, oh, you know, this is what happens when just enough stuff hits. Even then, they still don't land that all important, crucial team fighting ultimate from the Ariana, and it still ends up at a one for one. Rascal Jester's just about hang, hang in. But again, they are on a timer. Each time they go for one for one, they're giving more gold or even gold trades over to the better scaling comp, and that's dangerous for them. It really is. That said, though, Hollow and Ace are now Sans Combat Summoners. Ace, of course, has the spellbook, so he could get the teleport, which is good news for him. But they are now very, very engageable. They don't have stopwatches in inventory. They don't have any defensive tools left in their own kits, really, outside from uh, you know things like the shields, of course, from Seraphine. But if you get onto them, you'll be able to stay on them. You will. Uh, Cogcog ticks over to level 16, third level of uh, the Captain Here we go. Ultimate. Hatch match is going very fast down the mid lane. That is a big time face breaker. Ace is in trouble, Ace? goes down. The Seraphine Sol? is dead, but so is Sol. Big shockwave though. Recap hits that one. The Megan on the backside is trying to buy space, but they get the jinx. The shutdown is there. The Hecarim is running wild, rampaging away. Mujin trying to get as much down as he can, but he can't find the last undertow. He's dead. They found it. Rascal Jester's get the win they were looking for they come back over towards the infernal drake and maybe even look towards baron as well ace is caught out the seraphine is not there for the continual continual healing and shielding goes down and rascal jester find a fight once again on the timer they get themselves the dragon they don't even choose to go towards the baron they want to take the dragon off the table get themselves a little more up in those offensive stats and not letting uh v3 respawn and take that soul for themselves how does it start it starts with a very fast Pony. It's Cogcog off on the flank, maybe trying to see if he can decisively engage himself, but he isn't close enough to the team. He doesn't get to Meganar anyone out. A Sol does get caught in the absolute fracas with every ult thrown at him, and the Callista does go down. At this point, you're thinking, okay, Ooh. excited Jinx, less excited getting hit by the Shockwave, though. As you're saying, no defensive summoners, gets caught, gets absolutely cut down to size. And Ace just had no way to get out of Sol Bay saying, screw it, I'm hopping towards you. Fate's call straight in his face. Face breaker, showstopper back. He had no way out. No cleanse, no QSS, no flash. He died and suddenly <laughs> it looks a lot Do not easier. pass go. Do not collect $200. And again, uh, so Russell Jester, this, I was about to say, this kind of stabilizes things, right? What it does is it denies the soul from V3 because they didn't have the Callista up to take both Dragon and then the Baron at the same time. If you have your jungler, well, if you, I think if you have four people well, alive, well, including well. Sol, at that point, I think you can maybe just about two-man Baron and take Dragon at the same time. They didn't have that ability, though. It's going to be mid lane priority again, waiting for the next round of summoners, waiting for the next round of ultimates, and waiting for the next uh, fight bell to ring. Sol's going again! Ding, ding, ding! Secret Timber, only show-stopping back Reiner, which is not the only way you'll see. Hachimeta, very, very low, goes down! The jungler is dead! Reiner is still alive, and now Kinatu's in trouble! Recap trying to get away, does have phase rush, but that Kogos was just what he wanted to get. Kogos got flash, gets onto Sol, but he's got QSS. Now this Nar is very deep, with very little way up. It's got, of course, a Sterax! Shockwave's not bad, but the HP bars aren't quite low enough. Recap trying to get as much damage as he can, but Mujin stepping forward so much damage, that dissonance does nothing. Sol trying to kite out there, he can eat. The Ren gets one. He's got a star. It's not enough. And from a 62% chance to win, they've gone and thrown it all away. I don't think you could afford showstoppering back the Braum. Uh, they tried to get the singular pick, but in doing so, they lost. I think it was Seek. Well, it might, it might have actually just been Hatch and Match at the start of it. It then gets the Jinx excited, gets the extra movement speed, the attack speed gets uncapped, and they run through the fight. Rassel Jesters, they don't give up Infernal Soul. They do give up the Baron. They give up that fight. 
This is what we're saying. They are on a timer. This is what happens if they take the long fights versus V3 in the late game. They are destined to lose them. Oh, they kind of are. And it was also a bit of a split call. Hachimacha went towards Hollow. And watch Secret here just take the brawl away. Well, it's just split off in two different directions. I mean, you can, you can respect what's happening from Rascal Jeff to what the call is, right? They say, let's get the individual pick, see if we can just snowball it into uh, very little. Because, yeah, you see there's the good angle from Secret onto Reiner uh, gives them an ability to get that first kill and then remove one of the important parts of this disengage. But Hachimecha doesn't really follow the same call, not quite coordinated enough. And Cogcog blows both of the defensive summoners from Sol early, and Sol is not hitting Hollow. Yes, the Shockwave comes through, but where's the follow-up? This is what we were saying. You can reach Hollow maybe with one ability per fight. You need to hit him with about two or three, though. Otherwise, he just gets to keep fighting, and he's got enough range to fight those kind of um, plays much more strongly than the Callista. That beat drop was pretty critical there, or that Assault was about to keep hopping away there and causing even more problems, but uh, didn't quite work out. About a minute 30 till this next Infernal Drake. There is a Baron on uh, V3 for the next minute and a half or so just over. We'll see what they can make happen with it. About 1,500 gold thus far, but that's basically what Baron gives you as a starting point. The shove now begins. V3 gathering a mid, but they're going to get a teleport behind. Hachimecha coming in behind with a massive, devastating charge. Mujin, very, very low, has got a golden option to keep himself alive and does survive right now. Mujin maybe still in danger. Kinatu is around the back with a Dominus, and he just manages to uh, take out Doesn't a lot have of the flash. Way, he's very <laughs> in danger. He's going to try and slice over the wall. Does so, and is probably going to escape. Key summoners burned from both teams there. Well, primarily Rascal Jesters, but they couldn't quite get Mujin because of a well-timed stop watch. In goes oh, Kog, though. And that's going to be a lot of damage. And <laughs> the Encore eviscerates Sol. Double for Cog Cog. And the shove will now continue with those members down. There's looking like very little way to hold on to this base. They might be able to keep the game alive, but it's going to be difficult. 3v5. I think they're just going to try and end it. The ace is recalling. He does have the teleport to get back. Ashley says, you know what? Screw it. Don't need to. They are going to push on towards these Nexus turrets. It is a 5v3. Uh, there's another beat drop. There's another kill. Hatchimet trying to get back to base, but he's dead. Anyway, Kinatu flashes back onto the fountain. And Rascal Jesters are staring down a 0-2 start to this series. V3 move to match point. Match point. Two games in the bag from the very first Two. I didn't really think they'd come out this strong. Heck, of course, we both predicted that 3-1 to Rascal Jesters. And who could blame us? We saw on the official stream as well. Bit split on uh, how the predictions were going there. Not quite the same level as, oh, it's just going to be Sengoku winning over V3. And uh, yeah, uh, with that second game in the bag, both on red side against what we consider mm. to be the power side in pro play right now. This is huge from V3. It absolutely is another command commandable game. It was a little bit closer, don't get me wrong. It definitely went a bit back and forth, particularly after some of those dragon fights. But Jesters couldn't get it. V3 certainly good. And Cog Cog still a nightmare. The Seraphine finally makes its way into a game. And we're going to go to a quick why break. You can see why it's fan. <laughs> <laughs> we're going gonna... to go to a quick break. And when we come back, we'll have a bit of an analyst test to break that game in a little bit more of its entirety.
welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We might be witnessing a blisteringly fast series V3 Esports up at match point after another fairly convincing win. Um, it didn't necessarily look like it at points because of where the goal being pretty even. There was a fed Callista, but we talked about team comps. We talked about difficulty of execution in the late game versus Seraphine and a fed Jinx and kind of proved to be true. But before we get there... We have got to touch on some of those early game woes for V3, for Rascal Jesses, I apologize. I was about to say, V3 doing, doing all right in that regard. They have themselves an early jungle and they get to move mm -hmm. ahead. Hatch Metra down on XP becomes very relevant for that uh, kill when Olaf finds uh, um, Hatch Metra retreating from a gang top lane. That was kind of a smaller... Uh, microcosm of what happened in this early game though it felt like the uh, rascal jester rather just grasping at straws the kank top lane was never realistically going to work out and they get punished on the retreat for it they managed to find some things bot lane they did manage to find a very hard force with a lot of ultimates to get a kill down there and it feels like rascal jester even though they picked an early game comp just could not find you know those bridging plays to get members to parts of the map where they needed to be to really start winning things they had one good fight around dragon but the early game besides that, very, very sparse and, and not really what you expect out of this composition. And a lot of their sort of team fight wins didn't actually net them all that much in the way of objectives. They get the early heralds and it doesn't get any plates. They get the fight around the second dragon and don't get the dragon either. Uh, they don't manage to stack the early drakes either. It, it just in general, because of course Mujin gets back with the advantage out of the jungle. And that made things quite tricky when you are running an early game comp, when you're running a Callista comp no less. You really want that dragon stacking to happen, and it just mm. didn't occur. That said, credit over to the Jesters, who um, did at least manage to fight back in the mid game with some strong forces, like just saying, screw it, we need to go in. And they did pull the trigger pretty admirably. Kanata with a good flank the first time, and some good fates calls in the light later mm. on. Yeah, so V3 controlled the early game very well. I think that Cog Cog was a big part of that. Mm -hmm. Again, winning out on the Nart. We'll talk more about that later, which meant that Rascal Jesta didn't have the leads for these fights they were looking for in the mid game. Nevertheless, like you were saying, they'd managed to force onto a number of different fights. I think particularly, like I was saying, that dragon fight where um, Kanati manages to find Hollow, Hatchmatcher manages to get into the back line too and get into the thick and things on the Hecarim, showed what this composition can do. Problem was, they struggled to really make that consistently snap and work. In the mid game, it just about worked, but we always knew they were on a timer. Yeah, especially with no snowball to back it up. The momentum wasn't quite there, and face calls into the showstoppers. Showstopper in a brawl, not as you want to see later on in that game. Quite some mid lane go a little awry, and suddenly you've got a Baron, and things get rough. That said, I do want to bring us back to that point you kind of alluded to, namely the NAR problem. Cog Cogs picked it two games into two different champions and come out fairly heftily ahead in both. It wasn't quite as domineering as it was in game one, but it's still a problem. And Kinatu fell down 10 on CS and in the mid in the most mid to late game fights, this this NAR has been pretty terrifying, honestly, from Cog Cog. Yeah. And uh, when you are playing this Callista into double stride breaker, one from that NAR and one from the Olaf, and then having a whole host of slows and zone control to fight around it is so hard to play these late game fights out you're absolutely right i think cog cog and the way he's piloting this now you're at, is is very dangerous now particularly because um he's winning not just those late game scenarios but the early game ones too it is just a point of uh, power the entire game through i think you seriously need to start considering either first picking or banning it away i assume that v3 uh, well i mean rascal just to have side choice for this next one um, but I, I mean, are they going to stick towards that blue side now? What's going to happen there? Do they have to just flip the script and say, okay, blue side, blue side, screw it. We had prepped for this, but it's not giving us enough advantages. Uh, I think the other thing we've got to call out here is that Mujin has had a bit of an edge up on Hatch and Mecha. Not necessarily all off one player's fault, I'll probably say, but the early vision into the early pathing into some of the early priority has caused Hatch and Mecha issues. He's not been able to full clear freely in either game. It's been problematic the first game. Nocturne gets the jump on him by going for the early gank by just skipping a quadrant, despite what looked like a fairly easy full clear from both. Second game, Mujin comes in with the early invade off the early vision and forces Hatch and Mecha into some emergency pathing. That has frustrated the Jesters in the early game because their jungler has been a known quantity and a weak, weakened quantity as well. Sadly, and again, it's one of the things we said right in the pregame. Hey, Hatch Match has been consistent, consistently great, not even just consistently good. One of the best, better junglers 
uh, in the LGL. In fact, I'd say probably between him and Steel for you know the jungle first place role um, within this region for now. But this is not the same player that we're really seeing on the Rift today. Maybe we need to see a move away from that first pick hack room, like we were saying. And this is why it's so important in a best of five to adapt, to improvise, and to say, okay, mm. in any other series, we'd be first picking this Hecarim. But right now, because of the micro interactions between the lanes and champion picks and how this other team is prepared, it's not really what we need right now. Yeah, I think there's some truth to that. I think you've also got to call out a little bit that if you are going to pick the Hecarim, then you need to defend it better. You cannot allow yourself to be scattered out so easily. And if the Hecarim's full clearing, you need to know what's going on with the jungler. You need pressure you... for that. <laughs> Of course, you know, it's happened in mid and bot, but you're starting topside and then suddenly your Renekton into the Nara is getting bullied around. And it's that Nar question once again, and we're getting quite circular here, but the point stands, a lot of these problems are interconnected. Rascal Justice need to find some kind of miracle here, or at least some kind of change in playstyle, or they're going to look down the barrel of a 3-0 defeat. I suppose at this point we need to talk over V3 as well. It's an incredible recovery. It's been two very hard fought five game series and this will be their chance to close it out. Can they do it, Nymera? Can they? I think they certainly can, particularly now that Russell Jesters have to throw out the playbook and say, we got to do something new. V3, who have stuck to their guns so far, do have the advantage. It's on Rascal Jester to step up and change things. Now, yes, they were the second place regular spot, uh, re regular finishing uh, team, but I mean, V3, they're winning in mm. basically across the board right now. Indeed they are. Well, we're going to go ourselves on a quick break between games. We'll be back in a minute or two, so don't go anywhere. We might be going towards the final game of the series very soon. Stick around.